This week in Gran Turismo, we race MX Fives at Horse Thief Mile. Race B sees the biggest crash I've ever seen in an actual daily race. And in daily race C, well, it's a traffic jam. Spa, is it a good race? Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide here in 2024, week 13 and it's an interesting week to say the least. First up in the background, we're at Horse Thief Mile, yes, the circuit that nobody likes and nobody really knows. We are in a Unos Roadster, otherwise known as the MX-5 in the UK and what exactly are we doing here? Let's five laps, it's a grid start and there's no false start yet this time, so foot to the floor, off you go. Comfort medium tyres and bop is on, but whack a wing on, make it look like the touring car, best way to do it. DR updates are off, but this circuit is very tight, very, very, very tight. It does mean there's lots of little contacts that can and inevitably will happen. If you don't want to do this race though, there are race B and C timestamps there as well as the guys for them and there's some interesting races for those as well. But let's jump into this one then. Let's have a look exactly what happens in this one as I got the world record for this as well this morning. Right, here we go then. Who's in this race? XO Sum, very good in road cars up in P1. We're starting somewhere near the bottom and here we go. Make sure you pop up those headlights. I nearly forget. However, I'm going to put them up right now. I've put traction control on one. Foot to the floor. No need to hold the brake. And off we go then. No real need for traction control there, it looked like, either. This car not got a lot of power in 18... Not 18... Not 89. 1989 did. Get it right. Right, let's head up here then. Hello to Dark Horse. They said hello in the lobby as we go through this right hand. I'm looking to try and get the inside as quick as I can. I feel that's the safer route on lap number one as we go hard into the braking zone. Any carnage up ahead? Not too shabby, to be honest with you, as we continue through here. We do get that position. Oh, oh Hansen Frank is off the circuit. We'll look at that one in the bloopers as we head down here towards the left end. Obviously, it's just switched back here at Horse Thief Mail as we go into the left-hander. And we need to look for a way to get around people because when you're on the inside, you're on the outside for the next corner, it's very difficult to overtake here. You really do need a good run somewhere as we go into the right. Everybody avoiding contact in the grand scheme of it though as we continue on through here. Looking down the inside. Oh, slight tap there as we go into this left hander. And are we going to go up then? Yes, we are. We are up a position then. We defend from the French driver up into P5. We go. Got Blue Racer up ahead. Hello to you as we continue on through here. Then yes, we do maintain P5. Then as we continue on to lap number two, fast forward in here as we go into the right hander. Very hard to actually get that corner spot on. Up ahead, somebody doesn't get it spot on. Off into the dirt then as we go into this braking zone for a second time. Slight taps up ahead. Oh, we get tapped behind as well. Initially, I'm looking at it going, ah, but thumbs up. You waited up. Fair play. You made an honest mistake. You just said, yep, yeah, go on, Titch. Off we go. Fair play to you, my friend. I appreciate that. As we go into this left hander then. What's happening up ahead? We've got somebody. Oh, they're out wide. They're out off the circuit. And we go up into P4 then. Right, we're gaining places here. So we've only got a few more to go, hopefully. And then we could be in the lead and win the race. But Chicken Angel is in the distance there as we head in towards this left-hander then. Hard on the brakes. Blue Racer trying around the outside. Looking to try to be on the inside there for the next corner. So some defense up beautifully as we go into this right hand. I'm on the outside. Not really the place to be on this final corner because it is very, very, very tight then. Blue Racer on the inside of Exo Sum as we go into this right hander. Trying to avoid contact then. Does inevitably get a bit, but does survive it there. We all continue racing here. As you can see, it's really hard to overtake then as we continue through this corner again. Very hard corner this one. Really is. Blue Racer looking on the inside there to try and get a position. Doesn't work out. Exo Sum doesn't lose. Uh, I don't even know what the word is there. Doesn't get distracted by it then as we go into this left hander. That's the word I was looking for. Distraction and pushed off wide. Didn't feel the pressure then. Blue Racer on the inside then. Slight tap. The rear does go easy on this car. We'll explain that in the lap guide of course as we go into this right hander. Once again, I'm trying to find a way past. Chicken Angel is darting away. Look at that. Chicken Angel just absolutely extending that lead then as we go in towards this left hander. Blue Racer unfortunately tapped Exo Sum there. And that's going to force XO Sum off. Blue Racer waiting up for XO Sum then. Again, good sportsmanship shown there. We go up into P2 then as we continue through here. Question is, do we catch up to Chicken Angel? The answer is no. We gain a little bit of time on Chicken Angel, but nothing major here as we go through the right-hander. One thing I do want to do, though, is get the fastest lap. Do we do it? We do indeed. We get that purple lap time there. Sorry, Chicken Angel. Stolen. I stole the fastest lap there. But, uh, yeah, very hard race to actually do here. So if you are worried about contact, avoid this race. If you do want a bit of control, though, it's well worth trying out this time trial. Let me tell you how to do it. So come into turn one. As you start going out wide, you want to lift off a little bit and try and maintain 78 miles an hour through there. 
It's all about maintaining as much speed as possible through there because you're going up a hill now. This car doesn't have a lot of power. The more speed you maintain, the quicker the lap time is immediately. There's so much time here. As you head up to here, though, you've got on the right side those plants there. You can use them or try and get as close to the 20 board as possible. Here's the chase cam version for you, as we always do now. Uh, essentially, you want to go hard on the brakes. Now, you want to keep a nice tight line here so you can straighten up really quickly. If you maintain sort of a wider line, you can avoid, obviously, a bit more, but you lose so much time. We head down the hill then, and what we're looking for here is that 20 board, alternatively, that plant on the right-hand side. Now, on this video, it won't look that prominent in terms of your vision. When you are racing, you see that in your peripheral vision quite clearly, and it's actually a really nice plant to use here for this break braking zone. Now, I actually want to turn into this corner a little bit more than going out wide. The reason for that, it just helps massively. It tightens up, so actually, if you come in here, you start to accelerate. You will suffer some oversteer there. Just be careful that if you turn into it before it starts happening, you will actually benefit from that actually getting oversteer, if that it makes any sense. All right on the right side, then the last plant on the right there. It's very hard to see as on this video again, but it becomes more obvious as you do the laps over and over and over again, okay? So that is what I'm looking for. Even less obvious now on the replay. Maybe it's not even there on some laps. I don't even know, but that's what I was using in terms of these laps as I continue on through here. Next up then on the right hand side is that dark green plant there. That is what I use for this left-hander. Now, if these plants do move, I've not actually checked this, but I was using these on retries, um, then you're going to have to pick out plants as you go uh, through this lap. But that's what I'm using. I was using that plant throughout the retries that I was doing here, and that's what we use here. Now, you do get a bit of oversteer here. You want to stop the oversteer as quick as you can to start accelerating and avoid oversteer on exit, of course. Now, the final couple of plants on the right are what I'm using here for this right-hander. You want to keep a really tight line for this corner, but you also want to get on the throttle really early. Stay in second gear for this corner. What's going to happen is the car may want to oversteer a little bit. However, if you keep it nice and tight, you can straighten up really quickly and then just accelerate out the corner. Be really aggressive on the throttle. You're so low down in the revs, it's absolutely fine. Sure, shift to third gear for this bit and really cut the inside. Absolutely not a problem there, and you can go flat out then towards the line. Make sure you don't cut that too much. It will give you a penalty. There's the world record lap. At the time, at least, was a 1 minute 4.2. Now, we jump to race B here. Where we're at Grand Valley Highway, and we are in Group 4 Machinery. Now, I'm on the GTR here, which means I chose that GTR. We're doing four laps only here at Grand Valley Highway, so quite a short race, but long laps. Racing medium tyres, rolling starts, and you can only adjust the brake balance this week. So my preferred weeks are, but you can only adjust that brake balance. I chose the GTR, it was quite high up in the leaderboards, and actually, it's a really nice car to drive here. Let's jump to the race end, let's have a look exactly what happens. Right, here we go then. We've got a G70 in Poland, GTR, we've got Huracans in there, they were quite high up on the leaderboard, Corvette as well. Good mixture of cars, actually, for Group 4. If you want to join this video, as always, do give a like, do subscribe to the channel, we're on that journey to 50k subscribers. We have a big old special planned at 50k, of course. Remember, the 40k was 24 hours of Nürburgring. The next one will involve you guys a lot. And yeah, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it, if I'm honest with you. Right, into turn one, we go then and continue on out there. We're now looking to catch up to everybody as we head down to the very, very, very dangerous hairpin. Always dangerous on the first lap. You have to be so, so careful when you come down here and be ultra aware of where everybody is. Now, we're further back here, so we don't have to be as aware from behind. But quick down here then. Gonna go hard on the brakes around the outside, then in we go. Look like somebody's just gone deep there. Oh, blind man's gone a bit too deep then. As we continue out there, we avoid that. Oh, what's going on up ahead? There's absolute carnage everywhere. Toyota GT6 around the outside. Oh, big crash, big crash. Oh, no, ghosting. Oh, I'm off as well. Oh, I forgot about that crash. I really do. <laughs> Obviously, I do the races in the morning, then I do a lot of editing, and I get a one second penalty. I forgot about that as well. My word. Why I got the penalty, I do not know, but a massive crash there. Well, look at that in the bloopers. Uh, but, you know, I edit this video, so I do the races, and I spend a lot of time editing this weekly race guide and the time trial laps, of course. I completely forget what happens sometimes until I start watching, then it all comes back. And, yeah, I was a bit worried there. Now, that beginning had a really slow exit onto the start-finish straight here. So we go side by side in the tunnel. I have to lift a little bit there to avoid understeering into them, and we do get into P14 then as we head towards turn number one. Hard on the brakes we go. Uh, so we are still in fights here, which is always good, but we're miles off the lead. Not a chance of winning this race, and not unless some catastrophic accident happens up ahead. Now, if we run into lap two, we go. The McLaren goes very deep here, so we get on the inside then as we go through here and uh, continue on through up into P12. We'll take that. Happy days indeed. We've got Chicken Angel up ahead who won race A. Congratulations for that race victory as well. Let's see what we can do versus you then in the Ferrari. So initially here, I don't really want to go on the inside in the tunnel. You lose too much time and there's lots of places to be made in this race with two laps still to go here as we go into the tunnel. I did lift there. 
There was no need to lift. Uh, you can do it perfectly fine in group four here. We do get the faster slap, though, which is always a bonus. In towards turn one we go. Chicken Angel goes deep. We go on the inside. We take the place. We steal the place and continue on out there in P11 then. Up ahead, there's a penalty as well for somebody. We advance further on in the lap. Who is that? Dark Avengers with a 0.5 penalty. That will be track limits. Now, you do have to be careful of the walls here. You breathe on them, you're going to get a one and a half second penalty. They don't like being breathed on or touched in any way, shape or form. Although, weirdly, I didn't get a one and a half second penalty. The absolute smash and crash that happened on lap one. I assume the game considered the fact that I'd been crashed into or I was in the crash and touching cars meant I didn't get one. I have no idea. Right, that Genesis goes a bit deep then. So we get another place here then as we go into the left-hander and another penalty up ahead for the French driver. That's another 0.5 second penalty up in the distance. We're on the final lap now. Up ahead, we've got German Icy Press. We've got Blind Man. Remember, we saw Blind Man go deep into that hairpin. That was actually a benefit for them because they avoided all the crash and just went straight on through. And you can see the advantage they gained from that. Looking down the inside of a fellow GTR driver here then. In towards the left, we go side-by-side -side action as we then go into this right-hander. Now, I was a bit concerned because being on the outside here, normally you get pushed into the wall, but no. No, the German driver gives me just enough room there. I really do appreciate that. Big thank you for that. Up ahead, the French driver takes that penalty, but we're boxed in here. We can't really go anywhere, to be honest with you. So we're going to go on the brakes. We're still sticking it on the outside here at the moment. German on the inside there in the GTR. Still very well aware of me, giving me space as well. This is beautiful racing. I did enjoy this one as we go into the right-hander. We do get a little bit of a run on the GTR then as we continue on out of here. Who's going to get the race? Well, not race victory. P8 then as we continue on. I start smiling finally because I was concentrating. But it was good fun, this. Really good fun at racing Icy Press. As we continue on through here then, we do lift off a little bit there to avoid some understeer and the GTR does get that place and really well played by Icy Press. Thumbs up from me there. That was really good racing with you there. Uh, I did actually enjoy that one. So we come home with P9 then in the end. So this race will have lots of contact. I feel like there's lots of contact because it's so short. An extra lap would have benefited a lot of people very nicely, but it is what it is. Right, turn one here, Grand Valley Highway. You're looking for the 300 board here. I break just after it in the GTR. Obviously, the way you break depends on the car, of course. So Adjust your braking points accordingly, but I'm just using those boards there. Okay, that was my brake marker here. You want to aim towards the corner here and keep it nice and tight if you can. And then you're looking for either where the sand goes to concrete or you, the concrete goes to the curb, which is the second square a bit further up. Now, these are your accelerating markers. I try and do the earlier one if I can because it sort of rotates the car a little bit. And then I can touch the second one. Absolutely not a problem. I'm be going flat out. That's what I'm trying to do here. And as you can see, plenty of space on the exit there. If you consider that plenty of space, of course. Heading down the hill then. Now, as we go down here, what you're going to want to do is turn into here. But you want to lift off a little bit in the GTR. Some cars you won't have to lift off in the GTR. It's advisable because you want to get as far left as possible. Three markers here to look out for. You've got the 400 and 300 board on the left-hand side. Alternatively, that tree on the right-hand side. Really good brake marker, that tree, actually. As that hits the edge of your screen, hit the brakes. Okay. Now, the further left you are, obviously, the later you can brake because you're going to have a nice route in towards the inside. You do want to get really tight on this corner, actually. The tighter you are, the better exit you can have as you start accelerating. Obviously, the wider you are, you're not using the corner as much and you'll end up in the barrier. As we continue on then, end of sector one here, we're looking for the start of that concrete barricade there on the right side. That's your initial point to start lifting, start getting your line right. Now, I've highlighted a second square on the left there. That's your final dab of the brakes where you then chuck it into the corner, okay, in the second part of the corner. So use that bit of the concrete first. So I'm going half there. I'm breaking all the way to that point. I'm turning in, and then I want to bolt out of here. Don't touch the wall on the left-hand side, but get as close as you can. On the right there, you just see that glimpse, glimpse of grass there on the right-hand side. That is your brake marker for this right-hander. You want to cut in quite early here as well. A lot of cars do understeer out. So if you turn in a bit earlier than you expect, you should make the corner absolutely fine. Okay, and that's what I'm going to try and do here. So there we go. In we go. And then the start of the fence on the right side is a really good brake marker for this corner here. This corner, keep a tight line. You don't want to run too wide on the exit. There's penalties running too wide on the exit. Obviously, you'll go over the white line. White line here is the penalty. Now, I'm going to brake hard here. You don't have to go to first gear for this one in the GTR. It's second gear. I accidentally go to first there just by mistake. And I get a bit of wiggle on exit because of that issue. Continuing on out of there then, we're going to be looking for the 100 board there. Now, the 100 board, really nice marker for this one. Nice and easy. I want you to point towards the corner. Don't stay out to the right side. Point towards the corner and go hard on the brakes. You want a kind of tight line for this corner. The reason for that is you want to open up the next corner. This corner isn't a priority in terms of speed. It's all about getting the line right for the next corner. So that's why I stay tight here, keeping it towards the left-hand side as much as I can. As I go into here, you've got those arrows on the right, uh, left-hand side. Sorry, it's not on the right-hand side. We're going right. Now, those are little 
bit of a brake marker, but also a little bit of a lift depending on the car you use. Um, so I use them as a bit of a dab of brake sometimes. Sometimes I will just lift. And I'm trying to get on towards the inside and there's an accelerating marker there. You don't notice the little dab of the brakes. The sign there is you should be accelerating full throttle by that point. The earlier you do it, obviously the earlier you're pushing the boundaries in terms of the bridge wall. But I look for that marker and I'm trying to go as early as I can compared to that marker. So keep that in mind when you go to accelerate. We continue on through here then. Look at that. We had plenty of time there. We could have accelerated even earlier. Right, we're going to end the sector here then. I believe there we go and head towards the final sector then. So on the left hand side, you've got the boards there. We're looking for the 100 board to be honest with you. Nice, easy marker here. Again, in the tunnel, this is a really tight line. You really want to take a nice tight line here to maximize the speed. Just because you're going all the way around, it's essentially a 180 corner. Um, the tight line is a better line. A wide line does not work here. Okay, so I'm going to come in. And I'm going to try and keep it nice and tight. That's what I'm doing here. Looking to accelerate as early as possible. As I come up here, I'm going to dab the brakes as I go into here. Avoid the bollards on the left-hand side and start accelerating as early as you can out of that corner. Now it's just a nice time to breathe here because as you go into the tunnel, again, you don't lift through here just to show you. Nice and easy. And we're going to head towards the line then. And that was a 0.5, I think it was. Plenty of time in that lap, of course. We jump to Daily Race C where it gets really, really interesting. Now, I'm, the, I'm in a Porsche 911. I do do the time trial app in a different car, which I'll explain shortly. And there's lots of cars all over the place here in this Daily Race. We're at Spa, 24 hour layout. And yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. 20 laps. 20 laps here at Spa, so a big old race. Rolling start, racing medium tyres. You do have to pit stop at least once. Times two fuel, times four tyre wear, and brake balance is adjustable. I chose a Porsche 911 because it's always a strong car at every single circuit, so if you're not sure what to pick, I always pick that car. It's always a good car, as we've seen in the car profiles as well. Chance of rain here as well, so do be careful of the wet weather. But without further ado, let's jump into this race, which you saw on the TV. is a little bit dry, but there is a chance of rain. Here we go then at the start. We've got a Mercedes AMG in pole. We've got a 650 SS Sonic. That's a strong car. That's the car I did the time trial lap, in fact. But look at this for a stupid start. Come on, Gran Turismo. You got this entire straight. Get everybody on the straight when you test this race. That was just biblically awful. And poor Jack got left behind. I got left behind a little bit, but I managed to catch up. But Jack had a hard time there to start the race. That really needs improving. It really does. Anyway, we're a bit further on in the lap. There is a chance of rain here. It's, the rain is showing on the radar, but it's not here yet. As we head into here, the Peugeot Video Gran Turismo car just backs out of that one. We're two, three wide up ahead at the moment. Everybody very close. Now, this is a very stat lobby. We've got Will Finalists in here. We've got all sorts all over the place. Very stat lobby for uh, the first race on a Monday morning. Uh, I was uh, very confused by this, but even so, we continue on here. Sebastian Loeb on our inside. Then as we go into the right-hander, looking to get a run on this Corvette as we continue on out of there then. And we're not in the slipstream at the moment, unfortunately. And fortunately as well for Jack. Jack is now at the back of the pack. Finally took a lap there. You see the glimpse of rain on the radar. That could be coming in here. So we're going to have to keep an eye on it. We do have to pit once, but we only want to pit once, to be honest with you. We don't want to pit twice here. So we can't exactly pit in terms of tyres early on and try and get out of the traffic here as we go onto the brakes. I didn't want to move over there because I know Jack was on the outside here. As we've got a yellow flag. Somebody's off there. Who's that? We've got 4GT off somebody there. Can't see where it is. Jack does get the move done, though, but we get an absolute blistering run out of that corner. The Porsche 911, so good at accelerating. It really is as we head towards turn number one. Blue 42 Thunder with a penalty up ahead. Hard on the brakes we go. They go out wide a little bit here, leave a bit of space, but then I think they get scared by me. Apologies for that. I really do apologize that I scared you there, but uh, hey, the gap was there. I went for it, and uh, yeah, we're up into P12 then. We continue on here with Jack catching me very quickly in the McLaren 650S. Yes, that car so good on a straight line then as we go onto the brakes and side by side in towards Lake Home we go look at this for beautiful racing it really is good to race Jack there as we look like we've got the position Jack good look down the inside potentially no very dangerous to stay on the inside and we do keep that position for now then so P12 it is we look to catch back up to the pack then as we go into turn one shots got scared by Sebastian Loeb then as we continue on out of here now you never want to go side by side in a Rouge and Radium you really don't because one of you will come out with a penalty. So Shelty has to fall out of that one then as we go up here. But Shelty is in that Supra, which is doing very well as well on the time trial here as we go into the braking zone then. So in the car down nicely. I will talk about the time trial lap at the end in terms of qualifying lap because there is some significant details you do need to know. Through they come, we go. We get an absolute awesome run on Shelty, showing the strength of this Porsche then. As we go down here then, towards the right-hander, down the inside of Shelty, looking to get it stopped then. We're on the inside. Jack trying to follow me 
through there as well. And we are up into P11. And Jack's just looking, going, Day Tits, go for it. I'll follow, I'll follow. Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a good strategy to use here. Now that rain getting a bit close then. We're in P10. Lap number four up ahead. More action going on here. They're going three wide in towards this right-hander. Are they going to make it work? I mean, they do. Fair play to everybody here. Now, Ari's here on the left-hand side. I'm going to just send it round the outside in towards the right we go. We are there. They realize I'm there, and we're up another place. And once again, Jack trying to follow me through. Look at that, then, as we go into the right-hander. And Sebastian Lowe looking on the inside of Hodgson, then up ahead. Hodgson always in that McLaren, always. When it's strong, when it's weak. You know where Hodgson is as we go into this left-hander. I didn't want to lose too much time to lead us here because I could see I had the leader's pace as we continued on here. Oh, nice and a fantastic 17.4 there down that bottom left inside. So I was trying to bug Jack Hodgson so I could get a run on a straight, maybe something like that. And that way I wouldn't be attacked from Jack or by Jack from behind then. So we go to lap number five then in towards turn one we go. Very difficult corner really in these conditions. It really is. As we continue on out of there, big old wiggle from Hodgson. Uh, so we're, what we're going to do here is try and prep Hodgson for the Kemmel straight. So we go left here. This is to avoid getting too close to Hodgson. I'm not looking for a move here. So I don't get too close and I can have a good run going up on Rouge and Radion. Through the right we go. I lift a bit too much there due to dirty air. And Hodgson just goes ahead. And if you could lip read there, you heard me say, or saw me say, damn it. Yes, damn it indeed. Because I prepped and it didn't work out. Hodgson unfortunately goes deep though at the end of the lap. Through the chicane we go. Hodgson leaving enough space on the exit there. Really good sportsmanship there from the TCR player. As we continue on through. Up into P8 then. P8 we are at then. As we continue on, we're now 10 seconds behind the leaders as we go onto this braking zone, then slowing the car down through the right we go. I'm going to continue. Oh, a bit of a wiggle there. Uh, are we going to break away? We do indeed. I think Hodgson actually lifted off at the end of the Camel Straight um, and just put the place there and let me continue on. Right, so lap number nine, we catch up to Muscafi. That, those clouds are still very great here. As you can see there in the Aston Martin, Muscafi goes towards that right side. This Porsche in the slipstream. Goes clean on by there. Nice and easy for me then, this one, as we go into Lake Home. Three steps up there on my fastest lap as well. So it puts me a bit closer to the 17s then in this Porsche. That Nath was in a Supra, I think, from memory. So that Supra is quite strong in the race then, showing some decent laps there. That's the Porsche, of course, if you're used to that name instead. Now, I chose to go in the pits on lap nine because I felt like it wasn't going to rain. That weather wasn't really moving that much. And that's something to keep in mind here. Unless it's really moving or very close to the track, I don't think you're going to get rain. It doesn't move that much. Now, to be careful on that pit exit here, you are in control straight away as we go up here then and go through that left-hander and we're looking to get back onto the straight. So just be careful with the weather. It doesn't move that quickly, so you don't have to make any fast judgments. People were delaying the pit stops for quite a while, to be honest with you, and I didn't really get any more fights because I undercut a lot of people because they still waited for that rain. I didn't wait. I went in the pit slap nine and I came home in P5 in the end. And Nath Laporte shows some real speed there got into the 16s in race pace the Porsche could get in the 16s as well it just didn't quite get there I think it was 17.4 my fastest right okay heading in towards turn one let me explain this lap first of all you'll notice it's sunny so try and get good weather to do that exit and then restart the qualifying so the 100 board on the left hand side is my brake marker in the Porsche I brake just sorry it is in the Porsche, but I'm also in the McLaren. Apologies, you saw that um, in terms of the graphic there. It's just after the 100 board there as we go into this right-hander. I stay in second in the McLaren. I'm in first gear in the Porsche. So do adjust accordingly where you need to adjust there. Now, in the McLaren, you rev the nuts out of this car to so the very, very limits of the rev limiter. And as we head, head towards a Rouge, oh, Rouge and Radion, not a Rouge. <laughs> it's a Rouge. Right, it's flat out here. It's nice and easy to be honest with you. Just don't touch the curb on the inside then. We fast forward to Lacombe then here, and we're looking for the start of the curb there. Now, of course, if this is racing, uh, raining, we are racing. In, when it's raining, you bring your brake ba uh, break markers back a bit more, okay? You're using these in your dry conditions, and this is where you set your lap. You need to get the dry conditions for a fast lap. So that's what we're doing here then. Hard on the brakes in towards the car. We go. Avoid these bollards. They will slow you down massively. Keep over towards the left-hand side as much as you can. I normally short shift in a lot of cars here to clip the curb and then continue on out. Be careful of running too wide there. It gets very, very slippy. Heading down towards this right-hander then. The start of the curb on the left-hand side there is your brake marker. Now, you want to keep a nice sight line for this corner, in my opinion. Or you really do. If you go out too wide, there is no grip out there at all and you will struggle. There it is in chase cam for you. If you do use the chase cam there, no harm in using whatever camera you like. In towards the right we go. So we've got three bollards here. We're looking for that third bollard. That's your accelerating marker. You can't actually see the exit of the corner at the moment, but that bollard tells you you can start accelerating. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now you're going to see that on chase cam perspective right there. You still can't see the edge of the corner, but you want to start accelerating here. Notice I start doing that and I make it kind of easy. 
Over towards the right side we go. We've got gaps in the fence. The final gap there is your marker. And you're breaking before this, okay? You're actually turning at that marker. or I think it's at it or just after it. But it's my marker, essentially, for this corner. But you're breaking before it. That's the critical part here. So as I start turning in, and you can see I've started turning now. So I am, break I am turning before it. <laughs> my mind went blank there. Avoid the bars on the inside. Avoid running too wide. That dark green stuff, very, very slippy here as we continue on down towards the pool on them. Now, what we're looking for is on the left-hand side, you've got a catchment fence. It just ends where the marshals are, okay? So, if you can't see the marshals, use the fence. If you can't see the fence, use the marshals. They're there to help you, okay? In the race, you've got the flag indicator on the right if you want to use that. However, you can see that catch fence on the left-hand side. So when you come into here, you really want to clip the curb on the inside and try and start accelerating as early as possible. Just as much, though, that you don't understeer off the circuit. You don't want to lift it throughout that corner. You want to just be flat out through it. In towards the next chicane then. We've got the gantry up ahead there. The circuit de Spa Francorchamps sign. Alternatively, you can try and get as close to the curb as you can. I use the gantry in this situation. This car is very quick in a straight line. So I was definitely using the gantry in this scenario. Now you want to keep a nice tight line for this first part. The reason for that is the second part is more important. So keeping it nice and tight towards the right. We took it left. It, I slight tap brakes there but you can just lift and go through there as we continue on out of the corner now on the right side we've got that white marker board thing on the right side that's what i use you can also try and use the start of the curb as your brake marker but i use that on the right hand side as that gets close to the times that's when i hit the brakes now you do have to be really careful on exit on this corner okay it's very slippy on the exit you do want to get on the throttle early though so you're gonna have to judge that accordingly as you accelerate out of here then at the start of the curb on the right you need to turn in or start turning in just before you get to that, okay? That's what I do here. Now, the reason for that is if you turn in even remotely late, you're going to go off the circuit. You don't want to lift through here. You really want to do this flat. You can do it flat in most cars as long as you nail it right. I lift a tiny bit there because I got scared. However, I could have done that flat and I would have been fine as well. So I'm going to lose a little bit of time here. Watch your mom. Absolutely flat. No worries here at all as we continue on towards the chicane. Now, I'm going to stop this in two different places. Let me explain. First of all, I'm stopping it here. You're looking to break just after the 150 board that I've highlighted in the middle of your screen. On the right side is that uh, uh, billboard, okay? Now, as that hits into your screen, that's when you break. Now, go to Chase Cam here just to show you. you can see the billboard on the right side. That's when I've just started breaking. You can't even see my break breaking um, sensitivity there because I've just started now. You just see the brake lights. Going onto the brakes here, you want to cut a little bit the inside if you can to give you a nice line for this left-hander. I don't normally brake for that too much, and you really want to straighten up the steering straight away on the exit. To make sure you don't get any power over there. That's 16, 3, 15 is very much possible. I do expect to actually maybe see even a 14, but we will see. So turn number one up to Fransom Hank then in the race number one. Just accelerated into him and spun him round. Not quite sure why you did that, to be honest with you. You should have waited up there. That is completely on you. Here's the French driver hitting me then so hard on the brakes. You can see there they would panic in there a little bit. And look at this for beautiful sportsmanship. They're just waiting up for me there. Absolutely not a problem. Really well played there. I appreciate people like that. I really do. I really do appreciate it. Blue Racer into here. Just the tiniest bit late on the brakes there. Slight tap on Exo. So gets out of the way there. And I go clean on through. So again, good sportsmanship shown. What happened to Blind Man then? Heading in towards the very dangerous hairpin here. Hard on the brakes. Get close to the Huracan. Goes for avoiding action. Actually avoids everybody. Beautiful sportsmanship and avoiding action there. Now what happened in terms of the action up ahead? So we've got the GTA 6 on the inside. Slight tap between the two. The GTR accelerates into the back of the GTR. Uh, GT86, sorry, and taps him again. That's very odd. I'm not actually sure what's going on there, but you can see the absolute carnage going on uh, because of that incident. No idea. It looked purposeful, to be honest with you, but very confused by it. Into here we go. Oh, big old accident there between these two then. Just all very clunky, to be honest with you, and then no room given on the exit either. So, no idea what's going on here. Now, the 4 GT. What happened to the 4 GT then? We did overtake it. We just didn't see it. Oh, clips the grass in the braking zone, spins on round, and spins off the circuit then. That is very unfortunate indeed as we go into... Oh, hello. Whoa. Oh, the ghost didn't save the day there. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, do give it a like. Do subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content. I do appreciate the support there. There are two videos there to check out, including Beat the Meta yesterday. And there are two companies there showing. You've got GT Amiga. Use code TG for a discount. And I also get a kickback, of course. Same for the Fanatec link in the description. You click that and buy what you want off the Fanatec website. Big thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in another video. I'll live stream again very soon.